Alex Tashira, number 10. Julian Brandt, 10, slash winger. Mario Gutta, number 10. Nabil Fakir, number 10. Why am I just listing players Liverpool tried to sign? Well, these are all players that show that Klopp really wants to go to a 4-2-3-1. And this season, I'm going to show you why that's exactly what happened. Welcome to the boot room. My name's Chris. Klopp's 4-3-3 is world-renowned and as a result, teams know what's going to happen when Liverpool play in this predictable manner. Trent and Robertson are the main providers, often playing as playmakers, and Salah, Mane and Jota all come narrow. This is a fantastic strategy when there are spaces. However, teams are as of late, this being January 2022, have started to understand the best way to defend against this. The best way being, they put three defenders in the center and any balls that come in get headed away and they try and hit them on, hit Liverpool on the break. This was very effective whilst it was new in vogue. However, as times went on and teams have become able to scout this, as with all tactics, it will become obvious, stale, uh, predictable. As a result, Klopp has tried to move to a 4-2-3-1 system and let's have a look at how Klopp has tried to make that work. We can see here how the old system would work with uh, Thiago, Fabinho and Henderson holding that middle space, Henderson and Thiago mopping up and trying to play vertical passes, Henderson into Salah, Thiago into Mane. However, as times went, went on, Klopp's tried to evolve that. And this is where the transfers come in. You remember Fakir, you remember Gotza, you remember Brandt. Uh, these footballers were all in between the line players. And these are players who could really do a great job in Klopp's current system of the 4 2 3 1. At the moment, Henderson's moving into this wide area we can see here. And as as Henderson, sorry, <laughs> as Henderson's moving into this wide area here, we can see that he's interacting with both Salah and Trent. And as they're interacting here in this wide area, Henderson's actually performing as the attacker midfielder with Fabinho and Thiago, doing the simple things, mopping up, keeping the game going. This results in creating an overload on the right hand side. However, the majority of football fans know that Henderson's creative output really isn't what makes his game so solid. It's his ability to read the play, to break play up and to dictate the tempo, keep the ball going. So in this instance, Henderson's really being used in this role because Liverpool have got rid of Shaqiri, who would have played fantastic there, and Elliot is injured. Jones has been injured for the majority of the year also, and he's a right footer, so usually he would play on the left. So therefore, Henderson's doing what he can in that position, and he has had some fantastic games, namely against Everton. If we continue to look at what's happening, we can see the combination between Henderson, Trent and Salah is really important in those areas. However, it's really important to see what's happening here. Thiago and Fabinho are acting as, as that three, with Trent playing more of an inverted wing-back role, uh, and Robertson at times going higher. At the same time, we can see that Henderson's operating in this space here, as previously mentioned, and this, in a traditional 4-2-3-1, would look like this, with Henderson operating in the middle, and then providing Salah, Jota and Mane more regular passes. The Pablo Amar, the Requelme, the... You name it. Attacker midfielder here. So, bear in mind that 
those things are happening, it's easy to see why some fans are, are growing, growing frustrated with Henderson because he's being asked to do a job that really isn't his. Oxley Chamberlain's been tried in the role, didn't really produce, and I predict that when Elliot is fit, he'll be back in the side before you know it. This really poses a question for Klopp because with no Shakiri having left for Leon, with Elliot being injured, are Liverpool now going to look for that attacker midfielder they've always really wanted to bring in? Is this a change in system whereby an attacker midfielder could come in and do a great job? Did they try and get Coutinho back in? All interesting questions. And would ultimately a left-footed attacker midfielder be the prime example of what you could place in this team to improve it? They're all definitely interesting things that should be considered. But most of all, what should be considered is what's happening at the moment. Because I think it's easy to get frustrated when you don't know exactly the role the players are being asked to do. So what are the advantages of moving to a 4 2 3 one well, as we can see here, we have a player in the half space, the Kevin De Bruyne space, if you like. Now, as Kevin De Bruyne has known, that back place, that back post rather, whip cross is absolutely incredible if performed correctly. And for a player like Mane, that would be gold, especially with his pace and his instinctual striking ability at times. Jota would also love this, especially as he is now prone to playing off the left. For these slip balls in behind, they would be fantastic for Salah, especially when the team is a little bit deeper. It also performs something else that's really quite important. It, prov it provides positional play. In a recent interview, this is uh, of January 2002, Trent was talking about how positional play is what's most important and that means when Henderson moves for example into a wide let me just pick up Henderson Henderson moves into a wide area Trent then moves into that position and then when Henderson moves here Salah moves here now what does that do it opens up the possibility of a one two with Trent and Salah can run in behind and the fullback is stuck he has to stay with Henderson. So that superiority is really, really quite important, especially in the long run. But this position, the Kevin De Bruyne position, this section of the pitch, will probably be suited to a left footer. However, Kevin De Bruyne does quite well with his right foot there. So let's have a look at some attacking midfielders who might be able to slot into that position in the future. In order for Liverpool to really get the right man for the job, that person would need to be able to generate shot creation, dribble in tight spaces, and be a threat in of, them, of themselves, because they do not need another midfielder who can't strike a ball. So therefore, we have had a look through some of the players on the player and shot creation 2021 2022 big five leagues and as you can see there's some really really good names there you know going from Payet who's incredible Neymar Messi Grealish you can see there's some very important names there now Trent's also there so it gives you an idea of exactly the type of players we're looking at I want you to look at this name Florian Witz he is going to be huge very young player but everybody knows about him so we will have a huge price tag that's a big problem we're going to look at some possibilities of other players i've outlined four players from that list who could be of interest Florian Witz is up there shot creating actions a very very talented football Maz Ma Malinowski also and Cuckoo and Diop but my pick would probably be in Cuckoo and the reason it would be in Cuckoo is because of this let me just move that across dribbling and Cuckoo comes out as the highest 
so he's a big threat in those tight areas he's creating shots via his dribbling and that's going to attract other players and he's considerably better than the other players involved he's not such a great passer of the ball uh, which could be a problem however we do have Trent and and or Thiago for those. So I think that Nkuku, if viable, would be an amazing option for Liverpool. However, uh, Florian Witt is quite frankly one to watch. And if, uh, if Liverpool could get their hands on him, that would also be an incredible option. Mm -hmm.